انصر اخواننا في فلسطين اللهم انصرهم في فلسطين على اليهود الغاصبين اللهم واعد المسجد الاقصى الى بلاد المسلمين اللهم وانقذ المسجد الاقصى من براثن المعتدين واخرجهم منه اذله صاغرين اللهم ارزقنا فيه صلاة قبل الممات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم انصر إخواننا في البسنة والهرسك أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونشكره ونستعينه ونستعديه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مدل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى اله واصحابه ومن تبعهم بسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد my dear brothers and sisters in islam the title of my khutbah today is allah never forgets allah never forgets you know the tragedy the human tragedy that is continuing uh, Gaza is still ongoing and we cannot keep quiet about it you know sometimes there's a proverb that says that when you stay for a very long time in a smelly place you begin not to feel the smell again now because this atrocity has been going on for a very long time does not mean that we should forget about it as we continue to witness this wanton and arbitrary destruction of innocent lives in Gaza by the bombs of the Israeli army, many people are troubled by the lack of help for the people in Gaza. Recently, someone asked me, and you know, the person was very troubled. And based on the trouble in the heart, they asked me, why does Allah, they said, but you said, you scholars used to tell us that during the battle of Badr, you know, Allah sent angels to help the Muslims. You know, she was so touched at her, said, but you said, you know, you tell us all the time that Allah sent angels, the Quran says it, to help the Muslims at Badr. He said, with all these things, people being killed, you know, over 12,000 now people, innocent people, children, women killed within six weeks. And the number is counting. And those who are not dead, actually, no matter what, they are, their life is traumatized completely. <coughs> you know? So she said, why does not Allah send angels to help the people of Gaza? As he did for the Muslims during the Battle of Badr. You know, when this question was asked of me, the Quranic verse that came to my mind, with which I responded, is the Ayah in Surah Al Maryam, the Quran chapter 19, verse 64, where Allah says, aydina wa ma khalfana wa ma bayna zalika. وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ نَسِيَّا No? Allah says, the angels don't come down. They don't descend by themselves. No matter the situation. They don't come down by themselves except with the permission of your Lord. With the permission of Allah. To Him belongs everything that is in front. To Allah belongs everything that is behind and everything that is in between. But you should know your Lord never forgets. 
your Lord never forgets. You know, some scholars, if you look in explaining this, I especially the phrase that is your Lord never forgets. Some scholars indicate that this phrase should serve as an arrow to the heart of every oppressor. Sahamun fi qalbi zwani. It should serve as an arrow to the heart of every oppressor who thinks that, well, they can do injustice or oppress <coughs> and nothing is going to happen in the end. And they say it should also serve as a balm or a healing to the heart of the oppressed person. Balsamun ala qalbil muslim. Because if Allah never forgets, Allah sees everything that is happening, you know, Allah will intervene either here or in the hereafter. This is because Allah hates oppression and injustice. And no matter how long it takes, Allah will eventually punish the oppressor because he never forgets. In an hadith al Qudsi, An Abi Dhar al Ghafari, Rabbi Allah, Anu Ani Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Fima Yarwi Ham Rabbi Azza wa Jal. This an hadith al Qudsi, a divine hadith, part of the inspiration of Allah to the Prophet. Anahu Qal, the Prophet said, Allah says, Ya Ibadi, O oh my servants, Inni haram to zulma ala nafsi. Allah says, I have made oppression, injustice, prohibited upon myself. Allah, he has capacity, he created everything, he can do whatever he wants. But he said, he has made oppression prohibited upon himself. He will never do injustice. And for that reason, he has also prohibited it amongst you human beings. Do not oppress one another. Do not be unjust to one another. And this is also emphasized in many ayats of the Quran. In four different places, Allah says, Allah laysa That is certainly, Allah will never be unjust to his servants. Allah will never be oppressive to his servants. In another ayah, in Surah Al-Fusalat, Allah says, Your Lord will never be unjust or be oppressive to his servants. In another place he will say, Wama ana Allah says, certainly, I will, ne- that is Allah, will never be unjust to my servants. And in the end, Allah says, in another place, Wallahu la yuhibbu zwalimin. Allah does not love those who oppress others. There is no doubt that what is happening in Gaza is an act of oppression and injustice. The people in Palestine have been enjoying it, but it, what is happening now is clear injustice and oppression. Children who have not committed any sin, women who have not, I mean, collective punishment. People are dying day in, day out, and people are being traumatized day in, day out. As I said earlier, in less than six weeks, over 12,000 innocent lives have been lost in the most appalling way. You know, in the most appalling way, carpet bombing, you know, dissecting people, you see? You see on the television, children in incubators being taken out and just laid down on the bare floor. This violates every sanctity of life. And we know that the sanctity of life is very, very important with Allah and with Islam. The lack of respect for the sanctity of life, as we are seeing now, is one of the greatest monkers, evils of our lifetime. Many experts have been saying, people who have been covering law, war situations, like reporters and experts, many of them are saying that they've never seen anything like this throughout their career for a very long time. So it's one of the greatest monkers, which every person of conscience should condemn. <coughs> As Allah says, Yanaha and Fashai wal Munka. Allah prohibits all evil from being committed. And the Prophet Allah has said it is very well known Adif, which will recite to us over time. Man Ra bin Kum Munkaran, Fali Gayiru Bi Yadihi, Fa in Lamya Stati, 
فبلسانه فإن لم يستطيع فبقلبه وذلك أضعف الإيمان. Allah says we should not keep quiet. Anyone who sees no can even being committed, if he's able to, let him change it with his hands. If he's not able to change it with his hands, then let him change it with his tongue. And if he's not able to change it with his tongue, then let him hate it, let him be grieved at heart. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we should never feel indifferent about what is happening in Gaza. If we fail to continue condemning this monkar, we will be complicit in this zulm, this oppression and injustice that has been committed not only against the people of Gaza, but against our humanity as human beings. Because if human life is arbitrarily decimated that it is being done, we have the right to speak against it. Because it's not only about the people of Gaza, but about us as human beings. About the dignity of the human person. Allah tells us in Quran, Surah An-Nisa, Quran chapter 4, verses 29 to 30. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُمْ رَحِيمًا Don't kill one another because Allah is so merciful for you, with you. He has put in a lot of dignity in you. Allah now says, وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ أُدْوَانًا وَظُلْمًا فَصَوْفَ نُسْلِهِ نَارًا وَكَانَ ذَلَكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرًا But anybody who does that out of enmity or out of oppression, Allah says certainly very soon Allah will cast them in the hellfire. And that is easy for Allah to do. And this goes to show clearly that even though we may not see physical intervention of Allah as we want it quickly here, Allah never forgets because we all go back to Allah. Alhamdulillah, in my last talk, uh, khutbah here, I was raising the question that where is the humanity of the world? Humanity across the world has answered and you find out that individuals, states have called for immediate ceasefire. The United Nations General Assembly, by a very wide margin, adopted the resolution that there should be immediate ceasefire. The Gulf poll that was done here in the UK, 75% of the people of the UK said they want immediate ceasefire. A similar polling was done in America. Over 60% of the population in America said they want immediate ceasefire. But the leaders of the powerful states are not listening. You know, they are not listening. They are yet to listen to this. Therefore, we should join. You know, we join the good people of the world in calling for a full ceasefire. Because what is happening now is against the humanity of everyone. The only person that Rasulam says, "Itaku zulma, fa inna zulma zulma tun yom al qiyama." The Prophet said, "Fear oppression." Don't be involved, either directly or indirectly. This is why we should indicate that we do not support this oppression. Because the prophet says, fear oppression. Because oppression will become darkness for those who do it on Yom al -Qiyama. And this is a serious warning for all oppressors. And those who assist oppression. <coughs> Their acts will haunt them on Yom al -Qiyama Because Allah never forgets. وَبَعْكَانَ رَبُّكَ نَسِيَةً عباد الله استغفروا ربكم إنه كان غفارا عباد الله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. All those who are involved in oppression, you know, they should bear in mind, as Allah says that وما زلمونا ولكن كانوا أنفسهم يزلمون. Allah says they are not being unjust to anybody who oppresses or does injustice. Allah says. They are not doing any injustice to us, Allah, but they are only doing injustice to their own souls. <coughs> because when the consequences come, they will regret it. You know, Allah talks in Surah Al-Kahf that on Yom Al-Qiyamah, 
Wawudi al-Kitab. When the book of deeds are brought, Fatara al-Mujrimina Mushfikina Min Mafi. And you will see the oppressors and the evildoers, they will be shivering with what is in their book. When they call Lord and they will say, Yahweh letana, woe unto them. Mali had al kitab. What type of book is this? La yugadiru sagira tawala kabira ta ila sa. It does not forget about even the small and the big oppressions that they have committed, except that it is in writing. And they will see everything that they have done presented to them. Allah would never be unjust to anyone. You know? People will only reap the fruit of what they are sown in the world. In a hadith narrated by Ibn Masur Qal, Qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أول ما يقضى بين الناس يوم القيامة في الدماء. This hadith you find in both Muslim and Bukhari, Sahih so Bukhari. Allah subhanahu wa the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the first thing, the first issue that Allah will settle between people on Yom al Qiyama is unjust taking of life. Spilling blood unjustly. That is the first thing that Allah will decide amongst people. Because it is sacrilege. You know, life is sacred. And if you think about it, I mean, it pains the heart that, I mean, the world, have you gone so low? You know, if you see what other, some people are saying about uh, even what is the atrocity that is happening in Gaza, you know, killing people in mass like this, it doesn't bother some people. And that goes the moral, that shows the moral situation of the world. In another hadith, Jundu said, the only person that the Salaam said, Yuji'ul maktul bi qatilihi yawm al qiyamah. That is the person, that is the murdered person, the person whose life was taken unjustly, will drag, will bring the person he who killed him, will drag him by to Allah on Yawm al Qiyamah, Fayakul. And he will say, Sal hada fi ma qatalani. Oh Allah, ask this one, why did he kill me? Ask him, why did he kill me? You know, many of those small children who don't, don't know nothing. I mean, one pain the heart. A mother was saying that, look, I mean, a, a day old child was killed and he said he got a death certificate even before he got his birth certificate. You know, when you see such things, you know, children like that, on Yom al Kiyama, the person at home said they would draw people who threw the bomb and say, La, ask this one, why did he kill me? You know, for your cool. And he said, and the other one, the one who killed, will say, Katal to who Ada Mulki for them. He will want to find excuse. He said, yes, I killed him, but I killed him under the rulership of so and so. You know, he want to find an excuse. That well, it's not my fault, it's the fault of the rulers. I killed him under the rulership of so and so. If I was able to do it under the rulership of so and so, then it is me, not me to be punished. It is the ruler who allowed that to happen to be punished. You know, the Jundu said, call the Jundu. Jundu said, Fattakha. You know, guide against putting yourself in that situation on Yom al Qiyamah. Because Allah never forgets. You know, Allah never forgets. So, you know, when we have this challenge of questioning, why Allah is not intervening. Allah has his own plans. And Allah has given us the choice, human beings. You know? To do both good and to do both bad. But what we know certainly is that Allah is a just God. One of his name is that he is the just al Adil. And as he says, he will never be unjust. And he never forgets. Even if people are not brought to action based on the oppression and the evil they did in the world. We as believers, we believe certainly that a day will come when everybody will be taking account of what they did in the world. 
That's my two brothers and sisters in Islam. Based on that last hadith of Jundu, while a killer may be stronger in this world, they will be weak in the year after. And the person who they killed will be stronger against them in the year after. As that hadith said that the person who was killed will draw the person who killed them unjustly to Allah and say, ask, why did they kill me? Ibadallah, inna Allah yamurukum bil adli wal ihsan wa itaiz al qurba wa yahad al fashai wal munkar wal badi ya'izukum la'allakum tazakkaroon Servants of Allah, Allah orders you to be just. Maintain justice wherever you are. Wal ihsan and be involved in righteousness. Don't support any evil. Wa itaiz al qurba and be compassionate to your relations or every person around you. Wa yanhaal al fashai wal munkar and Allah prohibits all evil and injustice, oppression. Munkar Allah prohibits it. Wal badi our rebellion. Ya izukum la allakum tazakkaroon. Allah is reminding you so that this will stick in our memory so that we can remember all the time. We pray that may Allah protect the oppressed people in Gaza Amen. and may Allah place compassion in the heart of the oppressors. Allahumma unsur ikhwanana wa akhwatina fi Filistin khususan fi Gaza wa thabbit akdamahum wa anzil alayhim sakinatak wa arham amwaatahum wa shfi mawdahum anta mawlahum niman mawla wa niman nasir Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan وفي الآخرة يا سنة وكنا باب النار ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للقوم الظالمين ونجنا برحمتك من القوم الكافرين ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وحيلنا من أمننا رشدا وهذا فيه أننا نكنت السميع العليم وتبع لنا يا مولانا نكنت التواب الرحيم غفرانك يا رب العالمين واكم الصلاة ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة آمين إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إنك جامع الناس ليوم لا ريب فيه إن الله لا يخلف الميعاد ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا إنك من تدخل النار فقد أخزيته وما للظالمين من